The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We'll start out the day like we usually do, the German DAX. As you can see, that ABCD pattern that we've been following did complete as expected. We've had a little bit of a pullback since that time, but very meager. The next chart we have to show you folks is comes from our good friend, Mr. Z in the den. He's got a chart here that just is really pretty cool. He's already posted it in the den, but I want to post it again. We'll be able to get this up here to see it. It just shows the uh, relationship in the S&P between the um uh, high that we made in September, which was a uh, new moon, and then the high we made here just the other day um, is also a new moon within two days, so three days. And so uh, that, those are that's a perfect ABCD, folks. That's what that is. And uh, it's if you look at the slope of the line, the slope of the line, the rate of ascent is nearly uh, the same. Uh, that means something because it tells you the market's in pretty good harmony. So let's keep in, keep in mind that because it looks pretty good. Now, you remember I've been talking to you uh, quite a quite a while about the profit objectives in the uh in Apple. Let's get this up here. Now, folks, remember, I am a technician. I don't know diddly squat about the Federal Reserve. I know it when it was formed there in Georgia and Jekyll Island. <laughs> After that, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, come as you go. But anyway, the number we were looking at was uh, 245. We did hit 248 and change. We closed at 243 and a quarter. And we've got uh, our earnings today, and as you know, Apple has a tendency to to really uh, blow the whistle when the earnings come out. So it's probably going to be an explosive move to the upside, but that, that has completed. And there's a possibility, very slim, that this uh, earnings thing might be either just okay or maybe slightly disappointing or whatever, whatever. I don't know. But anyway, that is a completed pattern. That, you know, I, I don't know where it's going to go from here. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we because of the earnings, you know, we could make a new high. But I don't think it'll accelerate past that because it's such a long-term pattern, folks. We're looking at this on the daily, the weekly, the monthly. This is a really, really big pattern. Now, remember, yesterday we were talking also about Softy. Microsoft, and I wanted to bring this one up to you because here's the, our game plan. If you remember in Softy was if it closed near the low end of the range, still above the gap, it was trading at uh, 142.83 on the close, okay? Now, you notice we had the beautiful butterfly pattern there. It's just a perfect A, B, C, D, uh, right just a tad above the 1.27. The high on the stock was 145.66. It closed at 142.83. Well, the game plan was is you sell it on the close at 142.83, and if it doesn't open lower, it has to gap lower. And I don't think it's going to because the market's uh, uh, steady this morning. So I don't think it's going to open lower. So whatever that is, uh, and someone let me know. I'm not in this stock. I'm just telling you this is right out of the rules that uh, the guy that uh, really thought it's called the 98 percent rule is what it's called. It was done by a guy named uh, uh, George Cole in a book called Keys to Speculation back in 1936, I believe, that uh, John Hill uh, led me to. I have a copy of it. But uh, the uh, breakaway, the gap that we had way back on the 16th of September comes in at 142.50. So that's going to be an interesting thing. I don't – this is my opinion is because the, I was expecting the market with Microsoft doing this, I would have expected it to open sharply lower. Now, if this – let's assume this for a minute. Okay, that this was, uh, let's say this was uh, soybeans, and this is what the, the pattern looked like in soybeans. If soybeans did not open lower, and the opening is going to come here in 20 minutes in Microsoft, then you get out of the trade, whatever the loss is. It might open $2 higher, 50 cents higher. I don't know what the opening indication is in Microsoft. I'm just trying to show you this pattern. And the reason why is it's a very rare pattern. You hardly ever see it. And it's also, it's also called the two black crows. 
but uh, anyway, let's uh, let's see where it opens this morning and uh, go from there. But I just wanted to give you an idea that those patterns have completed. The the price objective on the Apple was 144. Excuse me, on Microsoft was uh, 144. And the high was 145 on that butterfly pattern. So we'll see how that works as we go through uh, the morning. I have some really good news, folks. Uh, Tom Hugard has uh, decided to be a regular guest on uh, TFNN on Fridays. Uh, signed him to a long-term one-month contract. He's going he's gonna to do it for the month of November, uh, starting tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll have him on for about 10 minutes. His book is out, 181 pages, uh, about the stuff that we did in uh, the seminar in uh, in London. The book is free. You have to contact him. I can't remember what the it was hello something was the uh, uh, was the email but if you ask him for it your book is out now it's 181 pages and PDF file and the few people that have uh, it's been three people that told me that they really like it uh, it's, it's a really a, for the for, I mean I can't believe he writes 45,000 words and doesn't even charge anyone I mean that is really uh, that's really being uh, philanthropic, I think, so that's good. Okay, can someone give me the opening indication on uh, Softy? I'd like to know where Microsoft is going to open just to see uh, what's going to happen. That's what I'd really like to look at if we could. And then we'll go from there. Uh, let me see what we've got here. Okay, I guess it's about, uh, well, not too much. Okay. Uh, all right. What, what were the other ones we talked about? We had one other one. Okay, it was the Google, too. Let's get the Google up here. We also talked about Google, and let's get that one up here. Just uh, just hold on one second here. Oh, dear. I got something messed up. All right. Hold on here. Currently, okay, that's going to mean you would lose uh, roughly 20 cents. It's no big deal. You're not going to get killed in softy if you did it. I'm just just trying to show you the pattern. I, I, I don't even, I've never traded Microsoft. Anyway, but if you look at Google here, folks, there's a potential here for a triple top. You, you see the high we made in July at uh, 1275, made another high at 1300 in uh, April, and we made another high yes, uh, two days ago. That's a, that's a possibility of a triple top up here. That that could be pretty negative. I don't know. I don't, that's just my my two cents for it. So we'll see. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, it's, it's sold off a little, and we'll, we'll go from there and see what happens with the rest of it. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Okay, uh, let's talk about the bonds. The bonds are ready to rally. We've had a nice pullback this morning to the 78% level. Oh, if I can just find my chart. Where is my bond chart? Please find me my bond chart. Uh, can't do the bond chart. All right, let's switch over to the gold market. All right, here's the gold market. Yesterday, we had this uh, pattern that we were looking at in uh, – the gold, we got down to that a triple bottom there, you can see. We've now rallied up. Uh, watch the, the key price today, folks, in the, in the gold is at uh, $14.99. Watch $14.99 in the December gold. <clears throat> That's going to be an equal move, uh, ABCD format. And so keep an eye on that because that's going to be a very interesting one to see whether it happens. We're going to take a break here. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and um, we have a uh, question about the Treasury bonds. I want to get these up here to take a look because we've been waiting for this uh, pattern to complete. It came within uh, about uh, three pips of making the exact 1.618 expansion down there at 158.03. Uh, the low we got to was 158.06. Uh, we've now rallied up to the 159 level. Today, we sold off to the 78% level of yesterday's low, which was right around 150, uh, 158.12. We're now back to that 159 level. We should get a move equal to what we had during the 23rd uh, of October. That move went from 159 up to 160 and a half. So that would take you up to roughly 159.19. That would be a 61% retracement off of that move. Folks, there's a problem in the bond market. Uh, I mean, we really, uh, it's not being talked about very much. We see it in the repos occasionally, but uh, you stop and think here. We've got the stock market at all-time highs uh, as we come into today, and uh, the Federal Reserve is thinking about dropping interest rates. Folks, do you realize how weak the gosh darn economy must be for the Federal Reserve to do something like that? What, what am I missing in the thought process here? Am I, you know, I'm not the smartest knife in the drawer, but for heaven's sakes, I wasn't born uh, last night. It was three nights ago. This Something is not right here. And I don't know what it means. And the problem is in the bond market. I've said that for a very, very long time, that it's not the stocks that is going to be uh, hurt here. It's it's going to be the, the bondholders. So I don't know, uh, you know, what's going on. I know there's pressure from the Trump. Pre I don't believe that for a minute, uh, Jim. I think that's all cannon fodder. I mean, uh, you're not going to hurt somebody like uh the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, because he's a very, very wealthy man. You know, he was an investment banker, so he's put his chips away. So uh, he's doing what he thinks he should be doing. I don't think he's yielding to pressure, but, you know, again, I don't really know. 
All I know is it doesn't make any sense to drop interest rates here. Uh, you know, and the, and the interest rates are really not. I mean, if you can't if you can't get people to do something at zero, what are you going to give them? You, uh, they're going to have to give them two toasters, I guess. I don't know. It, you know, the negative interest rates has never made any sense to me, and it's on a global basis. So that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. All right, let's move on to the next question someone had. That is about the hogs, folks. The hogs are down here, major support here at 64. They've got to hold this 64 level. Uh, there's something seriously wrong in the old piggies. Uh, let's get this up here to take a look at these Christmas hogs. That's cattle, just a second. There, there are two different things. All right, let's get the hogs up here so we can take a quick look at them. And you'll see here that... Uh, they are down to that 64 level one more time, and they need to hold that. Uh, well, they, well, that, that's not true. They could get to the 786 at uh, 62, so they're within two cents of where they really need to hold, and that would be a Gartley there. That would be a really nice one at 62 cents. I'm not involved in the hog market. I do, uh, I do watch it uh, quite a bit. Let's uh, let's switch over the uh, modus operandi here over to the uh, currencies this morning. Uh, pay attention to the euro, folks. We had that rally up to that 111.15. We're now backing off. It's going to be an interesting test that we have here uh, in the euro because it's trying to uh, turn the corner here and be bullish. Uh, whether it does or not, I don't know, but let's get the chart up here so we can take a uh, look at it to review where we are, and you'll be able to see here that we're looking for it to get down here to about that 110 level. Right now, we're uh, about uh, 80 points, uh, 70 points away on it right now. So that's, uh, that's what I'm watching here this morning. So let's keep an eye on it, see whether it means anything, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. That's pretty much it. Uh, any other questions that anybody else might have. Those are the main things that I want. Oh, the Bitcoin. Uh, we, we, we mentioned Bitcoin because we had that big rally uh, off of that 78% Gartley. Oh, man, alive. Hold on one second, boys and girls. Just a second here. Boy, oh, boy. Okay. Let's get this up here and we'll get it. There we go. And you'll see that uh, we we had that big run up to 10,000. We're backing off a little bit, but very quietly in Bitcoin. So that news was uh, precipitated by the premier of China saying that they liked blockchain stuff in China. And so the whole world tried to uh, sneak in and, uh, you know, has to get involved uh, right away. So that's uh, that's neither here nor there. Okay, let's move on to the next one that we want to uh, look at here, and that is we've covered the DAX. Uh, oh, the crude oil. The crude oil has uh, backed off, much like we thought, down to near pretty good support, folks. We got down to the uh, to the low 54 levels. So let's get this up here and take a look at it. We'll be able to see it. All righty, there we'll. See. Okay, uh, Ruby wants to talk about coffee and sugar. No problem, Ruby. What I've got to do here for you, I am going to do these live. So give me a second here, and I want to come up here and take a quick look here at this uh, little puppy here. We want to do, well, let's do the sugar first. And uh, let's get this one up here. Just bear with me here, folks. I want to do these live so that we're able to see uh, what we're watching. We want to do October. Nope, we got to do a nearby sugar. Hold on just a second here. Okay, all right. It makes it well. This is not a very good chart because of the switch over. Um, just give me a second to update this. Uh, uh, the problem is they switched over the contracts, uh, Ruby, and I've got to make the. Uh, make the adjustment here, and I'm not able to do that right now. What we've done here, it, this is not a good chart, Ruby. I, I can't really bring this up. Well, I'm going to bring it up, but I'll tell you that it's not a good chart. And the reason why it's missing data, because it's switching over. And uh, let's get this up here. Oh, that's not good. Hold on just a second. I got to move it over just a little bit here. All righty. Uh, you see, we over the past uh, few weeks, we've backed off to this $12 level. The $10 level was for uh, the sugar that we had for uh, October, folks. And so uh, sugar is still uh, ha holding okay. We needed to get above $13 in order to get the trend started back up. Uh, let's take a look at the old coffee, and uh, let's take a look here. Uh, hold on a second here. We got a 40. Okay, just a second here. We'll get this moving. 
All righty, hold on to the old coffee. Sorry, folks, I'm trying to get these things done, and I'm just uh, a little behind the graph right now, JJK. I don't know why they have coffee listed as KC, but that's what it is. Uh, coffee's doing pretty good. We just made a – oh, coffee's very interesting here. I haven't looked at this uh, – Probably should start. Uh, this is interesting one in coffee, Ruby. We've got a really nice pattern here in the coffee. Uh, take a look at this. We have a 135 pattern, folks. You see the high that we made? I don't know if that's, uh, it looks like it's, uh, yeah, this is today's, uh, yeah. Yesterday's high was a 78% retracement of the high from the 30th. It was also a 61% retracement from the high on the 16th. That makes it a 135 pattern. And if you look at it really closely, Ruby, you'll see the ABCD pattern from the 14th of October up into the 21st, down into the 23rd, and then up into yesterday. Yesterday. That was a beautiful ABCD coming in at the 78% level of the high on the 30th and 61. So we'll take a break here. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the markets opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We've had a question about... Uh, 
Okay, uh, Mr. Bill is asking a question. Larry, the name of the cycles group. I don't know. Could you be a little more specific, Bill? Uh, there's a, you know, th there was the foundation for the study of cycles. Is that the one you're thinking of? Out of, uh, used to be in Pittsburgh. I don't know where it is now. I didn't know if it exists anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. it. Was the foundation for the study of cycles? I don't know where they are anymore. I never. The the fellow that uh, was doing it, David Perales, he died unexpectedly. He uh, was living in Spain, and evidently he he died unexpectedly. And I think someone was trying to take it over, but. There were so many loose ends that uh, they don't know what the heck to do. And Bill, um, oh shucks, I can't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a. Uh, hold on a second here. Uh, anyway, that someone was trying to revive it, but I don't know anything uh, other than that. I think it was Jake Bernstein and somebody else because they were they were involved with uh, a little bit of the cycles program back in '88 when Tudor was. But then he there's someone there. You found something there. There you go. That'll be that'll be as close as you can get just by googling it, which will tell you pretty much what you're looking at. So that's uh, pretty much what we're watching. Let's did the Microsoft Open, folks. Could you give me the opening on Microsoft, please? I just want to see what the pattern looks like. Because sometimes they, uh, yes, uh, Jake still does give seminars. He lives up at where they're having all those fires up there. Uh, that's where he is. Up, he's up in that Sonoma County area of the wine country of Northern California. Jake's right in that same area, so I hope he's okay. All right, uh, no, no quote for me on the uh, old Microsoft. Come on, boys and girls, you got to help the old cowboy out here. It's not going to be easy. One thirty-three forty was that was the opening price. Okay, thank you very much. All right. That's what we want to see. So that would have been uh, that would have been 46. That would have been a 60 cent loss on that because it did not gap down. Okay. Now the same the same thing would happen today is if it closes on the low end of the range and still has that gap there, you've got to try it one more time. So uh, we'll see. All right. Let's just move on. It probably doesn't mean anything. Market's going to go straight up after the Dow after the Fed. Everybody knows that, don't they? All right. Let's. Uh, Look at one other pattern here that we still think is in play here, folks. We like this. We like this. And that is the uh, if you take a look at this soybean chart, this happens to be the March soybeans. We've been in this really tight consolidation now for two weeks. Uh, we're trading uh, about a little bit higher uh, than the price we have here. But as long as we can stay above 942, I think we've got a, a chance for the market to uh, to go higher in the soybeans. I you know, that's just the basic of the fact that we went so quietly in a correction here uh, at this high level is usually is, is usually pretty uh, pretty important. So we'll uh, we'll we'll watch that as we uh, as we go through, you know, looking at some of these. So let's keep a close eye on that as we watch it this morning. Regarding the crude oil, we're having a little bit of a bounce in here, folks. But I would use any bounce here to get short. We've made a major major top up there at that 57 level, and we're trading at 54 and change right now. And uh, that you know down two and a half dollars already. I think we're going to go a lot lower, but uh, that's neither here nor there. The gold is very important. Remember, 14.99 in the gold. That's a very, very key figure, uh, equal to you know 14 bucks off the last low. So uh, they they're still pointing down in the metals, folks. I don't know what's going to happen with the Fed in there today, but if the market gets above 15.15 for some reason and closes above there, that would change that whole scenario in gold. Let's just bring it up here to show you what that would mean because you'll get it up here this is the uh, this is the four hour chart remember we are trading thirteen dollars under the price that we're looking at right now and this is fifteen oh seven that's a, the price from Friday and now we're at uh, fourteen ninety four and that's down you know quite a ways so you can see if we can get above that fifteen fifteen then it's got a chance to have legs but until that happens it will take something like the Federal Reserve to make it uh, make it move so that's uh, that's the way I'm looking at it uh, okay the, the transportations are down uh, transportations completed a nice ABCD up there uh, on uh, in fact is if I think I can show it here uh, yeah because we did complete it let's get it up here 
because we had that big strong day on Monday. You'll be able to see the completion here in the uh, transportations up there at uh, just a little under 11,000. And uh, we're trading under that now. It was down yesterday and again, uh, down again today. Uh, folks, there's not a lot of volume going on in stocks. That's one of the reasons why, you know, you have to be really skeptical to be short up here because there's just no volume. I mean, if you had a lot of volume and a lot of big players, you'd think that this would be a blow off, but it doesn't appear to do that. It's just making marginal new highs. Now, whether that means anything, I don't know. But look, we've got stocks like Google, Apple, and Microsoft all making major completion and patterns. And that those, you know, I, I have to believe in those because those are the big ones. I mean, we're looking at a monthly charts on Apple and, uh, and Microsoft showing you uh, those big patterns. So I, I think it means something, you know, that's neither here nor there. Let's switch over to the old British pound here, folks. Uh, we've had a little bit of quieting in the news over there. And uh, that is a 135 pattern. You're right, Marshall, in the transportation. Mark, Mark, uh, Marshall's on his game today. That is 135. Here is the British pound. Uh, we've completed that uh, big ABCD pattern at 130. We're now trading down in the 128 zone. We're looking for it to come down at least to the 127 level which would be equal to the last correction that we had during September, where it went from 126 down to 122. So four points off of 130 takes you to 126, and that's a 382. You got to really look closely at the pound should we get down to that 126 level. It's going to be very, very, uh, very, very important. The other one that is really interesting, and we're, we're setting at this level for so many days now, I think it's four days in a row, it's waiting for the Fed to do something. And that is this uh, dollar yen. Uh, you'll notice that we have that 135 pattern in vogue. As long as we don't get above 109, uh, we're trading at 108.38, I believe, this morning uh, with the Fed in there. We've been rallying for nine days. So uh, the, whatever the Fed does today, and I would not be surprised if they didn't do anything. I mean, everybody thinks they're going to do something, and usually do they, they, they do pull a, a, a little trick on people occasionally. And, and <laughs> some Someone's asked me if the Fed is politically motivated, folks. Uh, the Federal Reserve is a private bank, folks. You know, they they, they really are. And they're right down on Pennsylvania Avenue in the Federal Reserve Building, but that's about the closest they get to being in the government. It's you know, it's a basically a private bank running our money supply, and. Uh, they are supposed to be uh, self-sufficient, which they are, and uh, they are, you know, they have to go through Congress and they have to be appointed and stuff, but they're supposed to, you know, really work on the interest rates, and I, I just don't understand, you know, how they can drop interest rates with the economy where it is unless they see something in the economy that is is actually scary, and they don't have a lot of wiggle room, you know, because rates are pretty, they're pretty low as it is. We're what, one point, we're 2.3 or 2.4 in in the uh, Treasury bonds, so that's uh, that's uh, that's a that's a toughie. You know, that's the way it looks like to me. So let's uh, keep in mind that that could be very interesting. Um, he, yes, it, it, we'll take a break here. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and there is one stock that's in the news that is acting very, very poorly. Uh, I'd like to bring this to your attention to see uh, how it's going to end up, but it is the chart of Apple, and I'll get it up here right now so you can take a look at it. Uh, what Apple has done so far today is it opened right at the 382, up there around the 245 and change level. It's now $3 lower with a lot of selling coming in. Um, folks, that's not a good sign for the earnings. Maybe somebody could get a tip off on those things. I don't know, or it could be just baloney, but the fact that it only get to the 382 level is uh, really uh, rather surprising. Uh, you're still showing the Japanese yen. I just posted the chart of the Apple. I'm sure I did. Let's just do it. You know what I did? I think I hit it in the wrong room. Somebody in Venezuela is going to like that chart. All right, there's the apple. All right, you see we had our high up there at 49.60. Remember the ABCD came in at 45, 245. We're now trading at 42 and a half or roughly. So uh, the fact that it only get, now maybe we reverse and get above this and everything's gonna look okay. But just starting out, it makes one wonder with earnings coming out today, what is somebody hearing or seeing that makes them think that it's not gonna be a bumper crop in earnings? I believe the odds are 75% of the time that Apple gaps up with earnings. Does, am I correct on that? I heard that figure on Bloomberg the other day. I didn't write it down, unfortunately. And if I don't write everything down, I'm usually in uh, some kind of trouble. So uh, let's uh, keep that in mind, OK? That's uh, neither here nor there. All right, let's get back to the currencies for just a second, because that US dollar is that a uh, where where we could easily get, with the with the Federal Reserve in there today, folks? It, all bets are off. But my assumption is that the U.S. dollar is going to go higher, the euro, uh, pound, and some of those are going to go lower. That's that's the way it looks like from looking at the charts. And that I'm a chartist, so you know I don't know it. Th those of you that are interested in the Federal Reserve, there's two books. One is called The Secrets of the Temple, which is a good book. But the best book to me is the book uh, The Secrets of Jekyll Island. That's the really good book. I like that one very, very much. And that tells you about the operations of the Federal Reserve. I have uh, the bonds are the bonds are bullish, folks. I mean, that's what we've been saying for two days here, that 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 pattern in the bonds was very, very bullish. Uh, you know, it's uh, where we were certainly due for this big rally. And that's exactly what's happening. So, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. But you know, we, 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 we used to be at 167 in these puppies, folks. 
you know, we're 10 handles lower or nine handles lower, you know, <laughs> that's a, that's a big move. Then just a 382 move takes you up to 162. So uh, that's a, well, watch it. We'll see what the Federal Reserve does. It'll always be exciting tomorrow when we hear the news and uh, go through, you know, all the things uh, that we're looking at. Someone was mentioning Amazon. I'll bring the chart up here. Uh, no, 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 Ruby, the days of the boat riding, you know, if, if they can't do it with zero interest rates, <laughs> they can't do it with anything. <laughs> but very, very good, Ruby. Let's take a look here at the uh, at Amazon. You'll see uh, we made a double top up there at uh, 2000. Uh, we, we came down and hit major support here with that earnings thing the other day at uh, 1700. Uh, we're now rallying nicely. We, we, we're not going to get much higher than the 382 on that, I believe, because uh, it, this market looks like it's uh, it's getting a little tired, and uh, but you know that's my opinion, and opinions don't count very much. But I'm just looking at the charts. That's all I'm looking at. We want to cover one other currency here, and that is this Australian dollar, because it's going to make another attempt here in just a little bit. We're getting very very close down to this uh, 168 level. Uh, excuse me, 167 and change level. So uh, watch it very closely. I don't know where it is today, but uh, someone checked the, the uh, Australian. Let's just let Larry check it. I can do currencies here without any trouble at all. Let's just get these right up here. One second here, and we will get those bondolis up. That's what we like to see. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, Let's look at this where we are here. Nope, it's still going higher. Uh, let's get this. We'll update this Australian dollar because it's still wanting to go a little bit higher here, I believe. Um, all right, let's just get it here. There we go. Almost ready. Get the old chart up here. Any other questions you folks might have? We've only got another three minutes in this segment. I'd be happy to answer a question. But you can notice we're looking at, at 169. That's uh, up about 60 pips from where we are right now. Watch these currencies during these Federal Reserve time, folks, because they really uh, they really do some jumping around. So that's uh, you know main thing to uh, keep in mind. Uh, we'll watch that. Uh, Oh, very closely. So anyway, we got the bonds are up now a full point from the bottom. That's a good sign. First time we've had a full point rally in the bonds. Um, that completes a small ABCD pattern. Folks, the low this morning in bonds, taking out the previous day's low, was at uh, 158.12. That was a 78% retracement of the, uh, of, the re of the move that we had back on uh, Tuesday or Monday, and now uh, we're starting that ABCD pattern, which we're completing up in this area uh, very nicely, too. So we'll watch it uh, closely, of course. Uh, the other thing is to watch the two, the two numbers that I'm watching today, folks, from, from a trade. There's one, 1499 in the, in the gold. That's a, that's a really important number for me uh, as a, you know, a, a possible topping area in the gold, and also the number of uh, 15. Uh, 12. If we get above 1512, that would change everything. Go when when you get, remember when you have the Federal Reserve in there, folks. It's really emotional and it's really illiquid, so you've got to be extremely careful and you've got to be able to come in and say, "Uh oh, well, you know, you got to put your stops in somewhere." But trade after Fed time. Don't trade right at Fed time, because the liquidity really dries up in there and they can move. The, these markets move very, very fast, as you know. So watch the key numbers. They'll They'll sort of lead you to the promised land. Hopefully there won't be any demons there from Jurassic Park, but one never knows. So one other one that is really important. Let's get this up here. <laughs> eh, don't worry about that life jacket, Bubba. You got no chance of that one. These this 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 thing with folks. <laughs> stop and think for a minute, folks. How stupid negative interest rates really is. You know, he had Stephen Schwartzman on from Blackstone yesterday. He said that's the most ridiculous thing he's ever heard is negative interest rates, and yet they're feeding these people in Spain and Italy and Germany tapioca laced with cyanide. So. There you go. Terry says, don't trade the action, trade the reaction. You got that, Bubba. That's absolutely correct. A good idea, especially on Fed, Fed Day. Um, well, we've already talked about the soybeans. We've talked about Microsoft. We've talked about the bonds. 
Uh, I think we, we talked about Apple, so we'll review some of these tomorrow. Uh, remember, we are going to have Tom Hugard of Trader Tom is going to be our guest on Friday. He's going to be a uh, guest. I've signed him up to a very lucrative long-term contract. He'll do it for the whole month of November on Friday. If it works out good, he'll continue to do 10 minutes a day for us talking about some trading technical stuff and a lot of psychology and his journey to where he became a, a super trader. So I think you'll all you'll really enjoy that and try to try to get his book if you get a chance because it's a fabulous book. It's free. And it's 181 pages, 45,000 words of a guy who knows what he's doing. And you always learn something from somebody like that. And he's a very good writer, folks. Not only is he a good speaker, but he's an extremely good writer. We're going to take a break here. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, I posted a long-term chart here, last seven, eight years here in notes. Uh, basically, that's uh, the one that determines the interest rate on your credit card, your automobile, and your interest rate loans and stuff like that. And as you can see here, we made some lower tops in here. The whole rest of the world has been, not that's not the whole rest of the world, but uh, France and Germany and Italy have negative interest rates. To me, That uh, anybody in this room that would give somebody money and pay them to hold the money with no guarantee that you're going to get it back. You ought to go out and reconsider a new line of work. That goes back to Bernard Baruch's book, Autobiography, one of the smartest men in the finances during the 30s, the best friend of J.P. Morgan, also Woodrow Wilson. But uh, he said, don't be concerned on the return on your money. Be concerned on the return of your money. So just remember, old Bernard Madoff pulled a scam like that for a very long time, and they're doing the same thing with this negative interest rate baloney, folks. In fact, if the negative interest rates becomes a thing that is in vogue, it's time for the old Walter and I to move out into the desert and start uh, day trading natural gas or something like that. Anyway, uh, pay close attention to some of these things, folks, because we're going to have some big moves after the Fed today, and uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. We're at a major, major area where we've broken out at a new high ground, and we really need to keep exploding above it. The key figure today to watch is in the S&P 500, the figure is 30.51. Watch 30.51 to see if it, uh, it gets there. I say that that's been an outstanding number for my friend in the U.K. for a very long time. We've been as high as 30.47 so far. So whether that's it or not, I don't know, but nobody else does either. So we'll keep a close eye on that as we go through some of the things that we're looking at here, here this morning. So uh, that's about it. I think we're getting ready to the end of the show here. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Remember, Tom Hugard will be my guest. Try to get his book folks 877-927-6648